Hi everyone, welcome to Impact Academy. So let us continue with the Indian polity. So the doctrine of uh, basic structure. Okay. So the Supreme Court held in the case of Keshwan and the Bharati, 1973. Okay, that there are certain basic features of the Constitution of India which cannot be altered by amendment under Article 368. So amendment and under Article 368, we have seen simple majority, special majority, and also uh, ratification of half of the states. Right. So only um, not everything comes under Article 368, but simple majority and all it, it may not come under Article 368. So we have seen that as a challenge to that, the government has come up with the 24th Amendment Act. Okay, uh, we have seen in the Golaknath case. So in the Golaknath case, the Supreme Court in the Minerva Mills case, which is the first case, okay, 1960, the Supreme Court said that the Parliament can amend the uh, everything, the whole Constitution under Article 368. Then in the Golaknath case said. The Supreme Court said that the Parliament cannot amend the fundamental rights. Okay, again that was challenged through the 24th uh, Amendment uh, Act of 1971, and then the Supreme Court in the Keshwan and the Bharti case. Okay, which came later. So if you look at the timeline, you will have a better understanding. So first came uh, the Shankari Prasad. Sorry, not the Minerva Mills, not the Minerva Shankari Prasad. Okay. So, in the Shankari Prasad case, 1951, okay, the constitutional validity of the First Amendment 1951 was challenged. So, after independence, the First Amendment was brought in to put all these, uh, what you say, uh, land sealing acts and all those things. Uh, so, they are taking away the fundamental right to property, right? At that time, property, right to property was also a fundamental right. So, because the First Amendment is taking all this away, it was challenged in the court. And the court said, so, the parliament has the power to amend the constitution including the fundamental rights but in the golaknath case okay so in the golaknath case uh, the par the supreme court said that the fundamental rights are transcendental and immutable and cannot be abridged or taken away so observe the timeline so first in the shankari prasad 1951 they have said that you can amend everything in golaknath they said no you cannot amend uh, fundamental rights and the government came up with 24th Amendment Act 1971 saying that Parliament has the power. Then in Keshwan and the Bharti 1973, even the Supreme Court said, okay, fine, the Parliament has the power. But it came up with the doctrine of basic structure. So even you have the power to amend everything, you do not have the power to alter the basic structure. Okay. And in uh, 42nd Amendment Act, no limitations of Parliament and no question shall be asked in court. Okay. In uh, 44th Amendment Act, some of these provisions were nullified. Okay. So, in Minerva Mills case 1980, judicial review is the basic structure. In uh, Even judicial review has been added as the basic structure. So, this is the basic structure. So, all these things. So, let us look at in depth uh, about these uh, basic structure. So, the Supreme Court in the Keshwananda Bharti case held that certain basic features of the constitution of India which cannot be altered by an amendment under Article 368. So, Article 31C introduced by the 25th Amendment Act provided that if any law seeks to implement the directive principles contained in Article 39B C, okay, that is regarding socialist control and distribution of the material resources of the country. So, Article 39, right, and Article 31. So, let us quickly look at Article uh, Directive Principles of State Policy are also very important, right. Okay, so 39 is equal justice, uh, certain principles of policy to be followed by the state. 39 is equal justice and free legal aid. Okay, 39A is equal justice and free legal aid. And if we look at the direct two principles also. Okay, see 39. 39A is right to adequate means of livelihood for all citizens. 39B is equitable distribution of material and resources for the community, for the common good. And C is prevention of concentration of wealth and means of production. And D is equal pay for equal work, preservation of health and strength of workers and children against forcible abuse. F is opportunities for healthy development of children. So all these subparts are also very important, especially in Article 39. And 39A promotes equal justice and free legal aid. Okay. 40 is uh, village panchayats, etc. So, all these things you have to remember by heart, starting from 36 to 51. Okay, especially if you are preparing for group 2, you have to go to India.
fine so b and c we are talking about equitable distribution of material resources of the community for the common good and prevention of concentration of wealth and means of production okay b is equal pay for equal work so all these things so now let us go back so 31c introduced by 25th amendment act if any law seeks to implement directive principles contained in b and c so that are socialistic and distribution of material resources okay wealth distribution such law shall not be void on the ground of contravention to article 14 or 19 which is the fundamental rights right so article 19 is uh, speech and association movement assembly and all those things article 14 is definition of fundamental rights so if you want to implement the direct principles then uh, for example if you want to say uh, prevention of concentration of wealth and means of production that means the whole land is under one person okay we have the zamindars and the landlords so thousands of acres of land is under one person so if you want to prevent concentration of wealth you have to bring in this land ceiling so each person should not have more than 2 acres 3 acres 4 acres okay then people started going to court saying that my fundamental right to property has been have been taken away by government so they are saying that uh, uh, these things when you are trying to implement the directive principles okay there is you cannot question about fundamental rights fine and the supreme court later held that article 368 did not empower the parliament to take away judicial review in the name of amending the constitution so no matter what uh, you cannot uh, i mean supreme court had held that uh, judicial review cannot be taken away we have already seen in minerva mills okay minerva mills uh, case 1980 right it was uh, among those uh, basic structure cases it is the last first is shankari prasad last is minerva mills so in that it has said that judicial review is also one of the uh basic structure of the constitution next 42nd amendment act of 1976 inserted two clauses in article 368 to the effect that constitution amendment act shall be called in question in any court of any ground these clauses were nullified by the uh supreme court in the minerva mills case okay so uh it's basically this 42nd amendment act is saying that any uh, any amendment that is done under article 368 cannot be called in question in any court it is not shall be called it is cannot be called so supreme court said that in uh, judicial review is the basic structure of the constitution and it is not possible that it, it shall not be called in question in any court okay judicial review is the basic structure so there are three implications of the decision in case one and the party case any part of the constitution can be amended as per the procedure laid down in article 368 no referendum or reference to constituent assembly is required okay no constituent assembly and anything any part of the constitution can be amended and but the basic features of the constitution cannot be amended so that is what keshavan and the party case 1973 says next there is no limited list of basic features in so many decisions supreme court has declared different things as basic features okay supremacy of the constitution rule of law the principle of separation of powers okay objectives specified in the preamble all these things are basic structure so in preamble what is there social secular democratic sovereign republic okay that cannot be changed that cannot be amended rule of law cannot be amended supremacy of the constitution cannot be taken away principle of separation of powers between the executive legislative and the especially judiciary okay there cannot be uh, any amendment in that part next judicial review okay article 32 the writs okay the several writs of habeas corpus mandamus prohibition certiorari all these things they are fundamental part of the uh, doc, uh, basic feature of the constitution you cannot amend them federalism secularism sovereign democratic republic structure all these things you cannot tomorrow you cannot say that there will no, no longer be any states and india is a single country that cannot happen under the article 368 okay freedom and dignity of the individual unity and integrity of the nation principle of equality not every feature of equality but quintessence of equal justice okay the essence of fundamental rights in part 3 the see fundamental rights can be amended but the essence should not be taken away okay the concept of social and economic justice to build a welfare state so welfare state is also one of the basic structure so all these welfare schemes can be continued okay any government that comes to power has to look after the welfare state especially disabled people old people okay so it is the responsibility of the state the balance between the fundamental rights and the direct to principles that is also important so tomorrow in order to implement direct to principles you cannot uh, take away the fundamental rights also 
okay so the parliamentary system of government you cannot simply make it into presidential the principle of free and fair elections limitations upon the amending power conferred by article 368 this is also important so article 368 is a limited power independence of the judiciary judicial review effective access to justice powers of the supreme court under 32 136 141 142 so all these are very important so what is 32 136 141 142 let us quickly look at okay 32 so we are preparing exclusively from the point of view of exam so if you are a complete beginner uh, you may get a little confused so first read it thoroughly let me one and then come back to these lectures only before the exam so 32 is remedies for enforcement of rights conferred by this part so all these are the prerogative rights okay habeas corpus mandamus certiorari prohibition all these things okay 32 so this is very important next 136 what is 136 136 is special leave to appeal by the supreme court so judiciary is starting at 124 okay establishment and constitution of supreme court okay so this is 124 and high court starts at 241 so there is a lot of link like that it is easy to remember that way okay so anyway 124 is establishment and constitution of supreme court next 131 is original jurisdiction of supreme court this is also very important original jurisdiction of the supreme court is 131 okay next you have 136 special leave to appeal by the supreme court okay it is 136 special leave to appeal by the supreme court that means even if a particular case is in the high court or the district court if it is uh, emergency then the supreme court you can go to the supreme court by special leave to appeal that means even though the case is in the high court if it is important the supreme court will allow the appeal and if the supreme court gives some direction that has to be followed by the high court or the supreme court can give a order also okay next 141 and 142 so 141 is law declared by supreme court to be binding on all courts that is 142 142 is enforcement of decrees and orders of the supreme court and orders has to discover it so this is very important suppose supreme court says something it gives an order to a particular state or a particular organization and if that uh, state does not follow then what okay then that's why 142 is very important enforcement of the decrees and orders of the supreme court so under this uh the supreme court had powers to enforce the orders not just giving the order if required the supreme court can do anything it can uh, uh, punish uh, the uh, state government or it can uh, uh, send uh, even uh, what is say armed forces also i mean uh, such powers are there with supreme court uh, in 142 okay 143 is also very important power of president to consult the supreme court so all these are very important so powers of the supreme court under 32 which are the prerogative writ uh, writ writ jurisdiction and uh, 30 131 is original jurisdiction right 131 124 is the supreme court uh, uh, what is a um, uh, founding founding of the supreme court 136 is special leave to appeal to the supreme court it is also uh, what is a basic structure of the constitution that means no matter where the case is you can go to supreme court if supreme court allows it okay so 142 is an uh, enforcement 141 What is law declared by Supreme Court to be binding on all courts? Okay, law declared by Supreme Court is binding on all courts. And one forty two is enforcement of the orders and decrees. That means not just giving the order. Supreme Court has the power to enforce it also. Okay, so that is about the doctrine of basic structure. Okay, and uh, we have seen uh, the order. Okay, the order is also. very 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 important because questions are frequently asked from that point of view also so if you are looking at the basic structure of the constitution first comes shankari prasad 1951 and last comes minerva mills case 1980 so if you remember those these two things you can put it in ascending or descending order so shankari prasad 1951 supreme court said you can amend all the constitution next immediately in golaknath 1967 he said no you cannot amend uh, fundamental rights again 24th amendment government said i mean the parliament said you can amend anything in keshavananda bharti case 1973 supreme court agreed with the government okay fine you can amend everything but you cannot amend the basic structure then 47th amendment act parliament said uh, uh, once we make an amendment you cannot challenge in court 
but then supreme court said that judicial review is the basic structure and we these are the fundamental things which you cannot change and judicial review is a part of it and uh, you these things cannot be amended as per um, i mean uh, what would you, uh, i mean you simply cannot amend these things supremacy of the constitution sovereign democratic republic nature that means basically the preamble secular character again part of preamble separation of powers between legislature executive judiciary federal character unity and integrity of the nation welfare state judicial review freedom and dignity of the individual parliamentary system rule of law and fundamental rights okay so after this you can answer questions on the basic structure of the constitution okay